Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Well, today's video is uh, a video that uh, is answering the subscriber's question. And he, his part of his question was about how AC electricity transforms to an EM wave through an antenna. Kind of a, an, an interesting question. Now, I've been going over some ideas. Uh, I've had some before this, but uh, the, I was going through some words uh, like force, light. This time it's uh, AC electricity and EM wave. Uh, I'm going to continue, if I can, with the another half of the uh, viewer's question on the antenna, and I eventually hope to get to a video on space-time. Well, the viewer asked two questions, but and I'm going to answer his second question, at least I try to. Uh, he says, also, your thoughts on how alternating electricity in a conductor converts to an EM wave by antenna, and vice versa by receiving antenna using particle model would also be interesting to hear. So this is what we're going to talk about. Well, the first thing he asks is about alternating electricity, and uh, it, it, that's a term used to describe the distribution of AC power, not the signals generated in a DC circuit. Uh, this is a simple schematic of a transformer coupled your AC coming in and, and the uh, current flows in one direction uh, on the first half cycle, the second half it flows the other direction. But they never go negative, they just go a different direction. That's alternating electricity. Well, that's not quite what a FM transmitter has as a, uh, as a signal. What, what, what we have in the signal is a pulsating DC signal. The signals carried in are, are not AC, they are pulsating DC. Now, there's a green, uh, uh, this is voltage, positive voltage, negative voltage, although it should be positive direction, uh, opposite direction. And so you've got an AC signal, and this is a straight, Alter, what we would normally call alternating, alternating direction. Uh, but a DC signal, which is in red, is a steady state voltage. It has one voltage, it's, got a, it's positive, and it continues on staying the same way. That's DC. <laughs> Pulsating DC uh, <laughs> also has a, always has a positive value. It never goes negative or never goes the other direction. But it has some sort of signal riding on top of it. That's pulsating DC. And of course, of course, you could have any arbitrary signal that happens to go on. So this is the type of signal we're going to look at that's in a transmitter. Now, when he says he wants it to be converted to an electromagnetic wave, this is the wave that they, everybody thinks about. And, and I had this slide at my last video, which shows that a charged particle, this Q here is a charged particle, oscillating about some equilibrium position, is an accelerating charged particle. And, and that charged particle has an electromagnetic field. And this is the electromagnetic part. And the, and the horizontal one is the mag, is the mag, I'm sorry, this is the electric part. This is the magnetic part. Horizontal. That's what the uh, I would think the subscriber is asking for. How does an antenna take this pulsating DC signal and convert it to this? Well, basically, the answer is it doesn't. Uh, here's a simple diagram I've used over time about an FM transmitter. Uh, it's it's battery-operated, 9 volts, and, and it provides power for each piece of the circuit, including a power amplifier which feeds a capacitor out to the antenna. Uh, this, uh, <coughs> this point here is where the signal is, 
and it's halfway be, between somewhere between the nine volts and ground and it's a pulsating dc because what happens is this is an oscillator that generates a sine wave at, at 106.3 megahertz and this is the mic that modulates that frequency makes it, it goes higher it goes lower because this is a frequency modulated radio transmitter <coughs> In, 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 in any case, case uh, uh, it, had, it creates a signal which is a pulsating DC. DC. Now, here's here's what you would have. You have the uh, the oscillator generating this signal and modulating the frequency as somebody talks, but it rides on top of a DC signal. And and the flow, the reason it's all DC because the flow never changes. It's always going this way. The G1 particles are always going the same way. They never reverse. <clears throat> but but you, have a, you have a signal riding on top of a DC signal. Now, presumably this is halfway in between and, and you got uh, a certain number of G1 particles here and then you got a peak number here, then you then you got none, then you got a peak, well, you got, you, you got the, the zero at this point. The zero at this point is not zero. It's some, some finite level. But when it goes through the capacitor, this DC portion gets blocked off and you're just left with peak and valley, peak and valley. And that's what you get <coughs> coming out of the uh, antenna. So you see, this is uh, this could be uh, this stream is like the electric wave, like the electric part. It it isn't an electric field in the TPM model. It is a stream of G1 particles with a repetitive pattern. The pattern based on the frequency of this oscillator, its modulation, and that that's the signal that's going out. What about the magnetic part? Well, this is the basic diagram of a battery resistor and a copper wire showing how you get a magnetic field. How do you get a magnetic field? Because in this case of the particle model, a magnetic field is generated and it takes uh, several conditions. In this copper wire, we, I'm assuming that the G1 particle flows in a spiral that some of these escape and get tracked by the G2 particle field, and hence you end up with a magnetic field, and it's a spiral. It, <coughs> that magnetic field moves in, in, in the same direction as the G1 current flow or G1 particle flow in the copper. That's how you create it. That's how it's made. Well, okay, now here's that, I scrunched this down, I'm not going to repeat this anymore. You have a power amplifier here, and that's this is the amplifier. G1 signals are coming to the capacitor. This signal right here hits the capacitor and goes to the antenna with the DC block, so you just have this signal going through the antenna. The antenna has is metal, a conductor that has uh, well-organized atoms in it. These also move in a spiral. The G1 signal here is moving in a spiral and as such can generate that wave. Now, yeah, I got lazy. I didn't make it a spiral wave going the same direction, but it'll generate a magnetic wave. So at this point, you have a stream of TPM uh, Part of G1 particles as a, a possible electrical signal and you have a magnetic field. But as soon as it leaves the antenna, however it leaves, whatever direction, this magnetic field is going to go out, but uh, you've got a huge number of, of streams going out in all directions. This one magnetic field, I don't know if it can match up properly with all this. Uh, I'll get, I'll come in and talk about this a little bit later, but my first assumption is there, since there is no spiral, 
they're, they're around each. This is not a spiral. There can't be a magnetic field sustained around it. it it's a simple assumption. And, <clears throat> and that may be true. It may not be true. Well, now here's a, an interesting thing. You, know, you, uh, you uh, saw this uh, burst here of all these going out. That's, that's kind of interesting. You know, I drew that that way. This is the cloud chamber, and, and this is the cloud chamber where the person is demonstrating a Van de Graaff generator generating as a high velocity, high stream, high intensity stream of electrons and he has it coming into the uh, cloud chamber and showing you what happens. Uh, listen carefully, the sound may be too quiet. Here we have a cloud chamber in active operation. If you look carefully, you can see the small trails of uh, beta particles and the much thicker, whiter trails of alpha particles. If you look towards the top, you can see that there is the uh, end of a sharpened copper wire, which I've connected to a Van de Graaff generator on the outside. Uh, the, negative, the negative electrode is connected to the pointed copper wire. The uh, ground of the Van de Graaff generator is connected to the metal plate that forms the base of the, of the cloud chamber. When I turn the Van de Graaff generator on, a stream of electrons will explode, literally, from the tip of the uh, electrode inside the uh, cloud chamber and create a cloud in the uh, cloud chamber. Here's what it looks like. quite dramatic. Usually what a cloud chamber shows are individual tracks of individual particles. In this case, it's getting hit with millions of electrons all at once. Let's hit it again. And we'll short it out. Let things calm down. And we'll hit it again. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to post the link on my description so you can copy it and watch the whole thing, but you almost watched half of it. But, but you can see why. Uh, when you send G1 signals or electrons out to an antenna and it gets to the end of the antenna, in this case, by the way, the end of a copper wire, it shoots the electrons out in all directions. Those are vapor trails of electrons. You can't see the electron, but you see a vapor trail that it causes in the cloud changer, chamber. So it's quite, it's quite, uh, quite dramatic to uh, see how that actually happens in an antenna. Well, <laughs> Is there a magnetic field after the antenna? That's that's the real question, and and there is a, a possibility, uh, but it's not clear to me how it, still how how it would form. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a, a an apparatus, actually called an EM apparatus, that is used to detect the electron uh, mass and uh, electron speed. Uh, actually, it's charge to mass ratio. And in this particular experiment, an electron gun uh, shoots. You can think of the gun behind this top part. The electrons come out, and if you adjust the current in the coils and adjust the voltage of the electron gun just so, the uh, the electron stream goes around in a circle. Well, the only way that works in the TPM model, the way I explained it, is this, this magnetic field, B, which is 
it's going horizontal here, interacts with the magnetic field around this stream. So here's the stream of electrons, and it's a concentrated stream, and at the time, after they come out of the gun, they don't, uh, there, there is no spiral, but there is a magnetic field that goes along with it because this is very strong, the F2 forces are there to maintain it, and it moves along with, with the stream. It's the only way this could work. It, 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 this has to happen. But it's one stream, one magnetic field. It's not multiple streams uh, breaking into, into pieces like, uh, to go back, uh, uh, how does this, you think of this as the electron gun and, and now somehow I have to have a magnetic stream around each one of those. Uh, I'll tell you I know more about what's going inside of each stream. Um, maybe it's possible. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Well, it's so basically uh, you have this TPM stream and no magnetic field. That's uh, from antenna to antenna. And the question he had, he also wanted to know about receiving. Well, here is a, uh, a simple RF detector with a three inch long antenna. G1 streams coming in. There's F2 forces around this that cause it to come in and go down, develop a voltage across, drop, voltage drop across here, which is sensed, amplified. That's got a, a op amp with a gain of 10. And then it's rectified and uh, to give you a steady state indication. Yeah, I mean, a three inch long antenna, not a. Uh, 10 meter, we're not, you know, you can detect radio signals with very small antennas. Uh, yeah. So anyway, but uh, you can have, here, here's an example of a three inch antenna. This is um, <laughs> kind of a spyware device uh, where you can detect the uh, direction. You got a compass, you got the strength, and there's a speaker, you can hear something. I've never used one, but uh, it, it, the, the detector, the G1s can come in and go down, develop that voltage across the resistor, and you can detect it. So the, but now the viewer's first question, that's the res end result of the f uh, second question, and actually he started out by saying, thanks, Mr. H., Great job. If you get adventurous sometime, can you explain how a vertical radio antenna sends radio waves? And the uh, receiving antenna needs to be vertical to match the wavelength to receive them. Well, I haven't really answered this question because antenna theory is not easy. Uh, I'd like to do this next time or sometime when I got it figured out because it involves impedance mismatch, output impedance of the trans transmitter, the uh, the cable of the coax cable that connects to the antenna. That impedance. Then there's the impedance of the of the antenna and you want all of these things to match so that you don't have reflections and one of the things i have to look at carefully is in the tpm model how does reflections happen and it, they talk about antenna oscillations well uh that's a that's a new wrinkle for me i don't remember that i did take a wholesome course on uh, transmission theory but not so much on antennas. Maybe uh, I don't remember that as much as I remember the uh, the cables and the uh, impedance mismatch and all that. So I hope to get to that at some point. Sorry, but uh, well, it takes time sometimes to uh, figure some of these things out. My name is Bobby Hilster, and I am your particle model guru. If you have a question, ask particle. Thank you for your attention.